when you purchase, uh, when a, a household purchase um, services, they are going to do two things with these services. So when services are purchased, you're going to do two things with them. One is that part of the services are going to be uh, consumed. And we can uh, denote the consumption by a household by C. But part of the services that are going to be uh, purchased actually won't be consumed in the sense that when I say consume, what I mean is that they're going to deliver some utility. Part of them are not going to be consumed. They are just going to be used. Uh, they are just going to be used to actually uh, conduct the visits. So they'll be used for matching. And uh, conduct the visits. So it means that actually, what the number of services that the household uh, consumes is strictly less than the amount of services that are purchased. And so there'll be a wedge between uh, services purchased and uh, services um, consumed. And that's a key property here uh, of this uh, matching model. And you know, it's exactly the same property that you would have on the labor market. If you have a firm, the total amount of workers that are employed is more than the total amount of workers that are actually productive because part of the workers are, are human resource workers that are just used for recruiting. So here's the same happens with services. Um, and so now what we need to figure out is if you have a certain amount of consumption that you, that you want as a household, how different is that, is that amount from the amount that you have to purchase? How big is a wedge between purchase and uh, consumption. Um, and of course, that's related by to the question, how many visits do you have to do if for a certain amount, of, if you have a certain amount of consumption in mind? So let's figure this out. Link between consumption So that's a key, um, one of the key derivation of that uh, simple model. So consider households. Uh, households um, conducts V visits. and aims to consume C services. Okay, and the, so the, dr the driver here is that the household want to consume C services. All right, um, and to do that, they are going to conduct uh, condu uh, V visits. So uh, what is the total amount of services purchased by such a household? Well, the household want to consume C services, so they'll have to purchase C services. But in addition, the households will have to uh, purchase extra services to fund the visits. And so we'll have V visits, and each visit we know requires raw services. So the total amount of services purchased is C uh, plus uh, V times raw. Um, so that's the total amount of services purchased. Now, there's another thing that we know, is that we know that each uh, visit leads to a purchase only with probability Q of X. Okay, so you know that if you, there's a certain amount of uh, services that you want to purchase, if you want to be sure that you purchase that amount, you have to, you have to conduct that, you know, you have to conduct one, one over Q of X times that amount of services uh, of visit. Okay, so because we know that one visit 
in expectation gives q of x services. So if you want one pure chase for sure, you need one over q of x visit. So if you do uh, one over q of x visits, and you know that each visit is successfully supported q of x, then you can expect to be able to make one pure chase. Okay? Um, and here you see again, I uh, there is no, I, you know, I omit uncertainty at the level of the household. So here, what I'm uh, I'm assuming that there is no uncertainty at the household level, just like we assumed in terms of the, the sales of services, we said, okay, all households sell exactly f of x of their productive capacity. Here I'm assuming that for households, it's exactly q of x of the visit that are going to provide, uh, you know, that are going to uh, provide a, a service. Uh, so one pure chaise requires one over q of x visits. So here again, I omit randomness. Uh, and so what that means is that C plus V times rho pure chassis they require C plus V times rho over Q of X uh, visits. So here, what we've uh, what we found is that um, the number of visits v for a household that wants to consume uh, c is going is um, c over q of x plus v times rho over q of x. Okay, and uh, so what we want to know is what the number of visits here that the household will have to do. Um, and we can uh, back this out. So we get that V1 minus rho over Q of X equal to C over Q of X. And then uh, To get v, we get that uh, v is going to be equal to c times um, one over um, q of x minus rho. Um, so here, what I've done is I've multiplied both sides by q of x. Uh, and then divided both sides by um, q of x minus rho. So number of visits for households that want to consume c is c times 1 over um, q of x uh, minus rho. So actually that's in itself a useful um, result um, because it tells us that when we think about the amount of consumption, we can immediately back out the number of visits, but it also tells us um, that Basically, in this model, visit and consumption, you know, they are directly linked. Once when we know tightness and you know, given the matching function and the parameters. So, in a sense, even if later in the course I speak a lot about consumption because that's a, you know that's something that's going to matter for welfare and it's something that we are used to uh, speaking about in macro. You you have to remember that once you have consumption, if you know the tightness of the market, you can always back out the number of visits in the background that households do to be able to uh, get this consumption, okay? Um, now, in addition, uh, what we see here is that we can also figure out what is the amount of services that a household uh, buys just for matching when the amount of consumption desired is C. So we know that um, services required for matching so we know that that's uh, rho 
time is V because each, ve each visit requires row services. And so using the expression for V we have, it's going to be C, which is a consumption that the household uh, wants to realize times rho over Q X minus rho. Um, and so what that means is that the amount of services required for matching and consume one service so if the goal is to consume just one service how many services uh, have to be purchased just for matching well that's going to be uh, c times rho over q of x minus rho divided by c you know for just one service um, and so it's rho over q of x minus rho. This, these are the amount of services that are required for matching uh, with the goal of just consuming exactly one service. And that uh, function of tightness, we are going to call it tau of x. By We are going to define and introduce tau of x. And tau of x, uh, it's what we called uh, matching uh, wedge. And why do we call it a matching wedge? Well, it's because it's a wedge between the amount of services that are consumed and the amount of services that are purchased uh, and matching because this wedge arises due to the fact that the visits for matching are costly. Uh, it's due to that cost of matching that that wedge uh, arises. So basically, uh, to consume one service, a household purchases more than one service, purchases one plus tau of x services. And this one service here, that's what will be the consumption. And this tau of x services here, that's for matching. Okay. Uh, so that's the key thing. So if you want to consume one, you always have to purchase one plus tau x. Um, and so just, just to wrap up, um, let's look a little bit at what are the properties of our function tau of x, uh, because this matching wedge is going to appear everywhere. So what are the properties here? Uh, so first property is that um, tau of zero, it's going to be uh, rho over one minus rho. That's because Q of zero, the probability to buy when tightness is zero is just one. So tau of zero is rho over one minus rho. Then what do we have? So then we know that the function uh, Q of X is decreasing, but we also know that the function uh, that uh, takes uh, that uh, takes x and computes rho over x minus rho. Um, that's also a decreasing function. So tau of x is a composition of two decreasing functions. Therefore, is an increasing function. Right, because uh, we remember that. Uh, So if I plot uh, 
And so if I plot x here and um, what I wanted to plot on the y-axis is a rho over x minus rho, right? And here I have um, zero and here I have rho. So we know that such a function rho over x minus rho, we know that uh, it has an asymptote when x is equal to rho. And then we know that it decreases like this and converges to zero in plus infinity. But then on the other side, we know that it comes also like this. Uh, so rho over x minus rho uh, is always a decreasing function. And Q of X is decreasing as well. Um, all right, so tau is, uh, it starts at rho over one minus rho and then is increasing in X. Um, and then it's also going to get uh, to an asymptote. So when Q of X uh, gets to uh, the value rho, uh, then tau of X is going to go to infinity. Oh, something I should have said is, of course, my parameter rho, and that's... So rho services, in fact, here I should have been a bit more accurate. Uh, rho is bigger than zero, of course, but it also has to be less than one, because uh, if each visit provides you with at most one service, but if each visit requires more than one service, then you're never going to consume anything. Uh, so rho is between zero and one and strictly less than one. Okay, so Q of X goes to infinity where Q of X is equal to rho. And in fact, um, so you remember, um, so if I plot just, uh, So if I plot x and here I plot q of x, so we know that q of x is equal to 1 at 0. And then we know that it's uh, decreasing and then it goes to 0. So it looks something like this. Um, and so therefore, uh, there is a value where um, q of x is equal to rho because we said rho was between 0 and 1. And this x, we call it xm. Okay, and xm is going to be, uh, so xm is a value of tightness at which q of x, the probability to buy is just equal to rho. Um, and so what we see from this uh, is that uh, tau of xm goes to plus infinity. Um, so if I want to, uh, if I want to plot and summarize all the results. Uh, so we have um, X here, and I want to just show you how tau of X behaves. Um, so we, if I go up, we said that two of zero was rho over one minus rho. Oh, and this is just zero. So here we have rho over one minus rho. So when tightness is zero, tau of x is equal to this. We know that at, we have an asymptote at xm, and that tightness um, and then of our function uh, two is going to be increasing from rho over one minus rho and go to infinity. So it's going to look something like this. 